Hello community, great that you are back. We have a brand new Life Code Benchmark Pro for competitive AI coding and there is an absolute insight. So let's start. You know, AI for code generation, it's beautiful. On human eval, we have nearly 100% accuracy. Everybody is just amazed by AI that can code here. But you know, there's just a tiny little war that said, hey, maybe those AI systems are just systems that have an extraordinary ability to stitch together patterns that they learn here from GitHub repos, but nothing else. And so we have here a team, team that includes International Olympiad and Informatic Medalist, and they decided to tackle this question and build Live Code Bench Pro. So the grandmasters here come together and say, let's build here a real benchmark. And they argue that current or older benchmark, while useful in the past, don't capture here the essence of what makes a human grandmaster truly exceptional. And let's see if the AI models are able to catch up. The code and everything and the programs are available. Live code Git, Live code Bench Pro GitHub repo here for you. Everything is there. And you know, what they are asking is not, can it solve a particular problem? But they ask, hey, how does it solve the problem? How does it code this? And where does its reasoning fail in the code generation part? So absolutely fascinating to see in our large language model that text generation reasoning failures. And now we look here at our code AIs. And we ask, where does the reasoning fail for the code generation? Is there anything similar? Let's look at the results. I give you the results right away. And here you have it here, the live results. You can also have it from 2024, the first quarter of 2025. And you see in the hard category of this Live Code Bench Pro, none. Absolutely nobody, no model is able to achieve at least anything else than 0 0.0. They all fail. Beautiful. This is what we want. Yeah? We want a competitive benchmark. Now in the medium column here, you see... There are some uh, AIs like GPT 4.1 or Claude 3.7 Sonnet in a max syncing mode that achieve exactly 0.0% performance. And this is what we want. We want to have a strong benchmark where only a DeepSeq R1 with 3% or the new one with 5% is able to do this. And then we already have containers with O3 high and O4 mini high that are at 40% medium. And yes, of course, we have easy, but let's forget about easy for the moment. Now, the potential impact of this is really, really enormous. Because imagine it would help us to build new models, better models, new architecture, different training methodologies to design better AI coding LLMs. It would prevent us from having benchmark where if we have just, it's hard to game through a memorization effect. So there's no way that the, let's say, the test data are accidentally available on the internet and the systems is already trained on this. But it is also nice to have a human in the loop because this is here really, they generated here this data, this is a human generated, and we have really grandmasters here that come together to build this Benchmark Pro. And they have here a simple reason, they want to test here for the reasoning performance of code LLMs. And they say, hey, we draw ex our data exclusively from the world's most prestigious competitive programming contest, Code Forces International Collegiate of Programming Contest, the International Olympiad in Informatics. It is contamination free. And we have here the ELA rating system from Code Forces to measure here the performance and difficulties. And this is great. But you say, you know what? We don't just run the AI models. We annotate the every problem. We classify it based on the primary cognitive skill that an AI would need that is required to solve it. And they found that this allows them to dissect the model, how they are performing, and they built three categories. The first one is knowledge, knowledge heavy. So this problem here is simply, you have to have knowledge. You have to learn knowledge. You have this in algorithmics and mathematical theorem. So you do not discover a new implementation idea, a new code idea, but you recognize here, ah, I know this task, I know this exercise, and I know in GitHub repo 40,000, they use the specific tool for the job. So I can now recognize the right tool for the job, and I can implement it as an AI LLM in the correct way. 
much more interesting is, of course, the logic heavy category, you know, and this is our beautiful chain of sort reasoning. This is best for combinatorics or mathematical proofs, you know. There is no single aha moment where suddenly you have here beautiful intellectual effort. No, this is here a meticulous chain of reasoning system. A pattern that repeats itself great for you. But then we come to the most important one, the observation heavy category. Now those problems here reward creativity and insight. And those solution here hinges on clever, often non-obvious observation. You know, like if you look at a problem and you say, I can't solve it. But then you think about, hey, wait, if I map this particular problem in a different mathematical space and I discover that in this space they have symmetries or they have other relation between the parameters, then suddenly I immediately see, ah, now I know what to do. And the implementation of the code is then short and simple. So knowledge heavy, logic heavy and observation heavy categories. Now there are findings. I'll give you the result. There's a lot of data in the publication. I'll give you the results. The coding LLMs are absolutely specialized and they excel in two out of these three. They excel at knowledge and logic, but they falter on observation. And you might ask why? Well, this is exactly where the large language model played a strength. No? They can retrieve and implement template-like code structures for known algorithms. Let's call this knowledge. And they can follow structured, formal reasoning path that they learned in the pre-training data. Let's call this here logic. So this suggests that this pure aha moment, you know, this creative spark of insight that is more than a pattern, this remains, this is what the authors tell us, this remains a uniquely human strength. And if you want to see here the data, here you have it, we have here if you want your color coded the problems, the knowledge heavy are in blue, as you see here, the logic heavy are in red, like mathematics, bit masking, dynamic programming, and the observation heavy, you now those that are interested in, those are here at the end where the performance goes down and down and down and down. Here we find the green ones, the observation heavy problems, and you see this is not where the eye shines. All the rumors that says, hey, AI has hit a grandmaster title, the authors tell us this is premature because AI coding models hit a hard wall. All the model tests and all the models that were available at the time of performing here this new benchmark, on the hard problem category, all the models achieved 0%. And I think this is great. It gives us room to improve, room to learn. Now, Interesting, they found that the AI failure mode is in the conceptual phase, not in the implementational phase. So what does this mean? LLMs are often better at writing here syntactically correct and clean code for a given idea than humans are. And this is kind of a fundamental bottleneck in generating the correct nuance idea in the first place. Here, AI struggles. AI cannot have this grand first idea that sets you to the right on the right path in the right direction in the right vector no this is where human are extremely good at but llms excel if we have the starting point we have the methodology we have the idea then to write a syntactically correct and clean beautiful code this is the power of ai code llms here you see this here on a failure reason in the tree map provided by the authors. And you see this here in a relation of O3 mini to the humans. And here you see it now, the implementation logic, the error that happened there, O3 only makes 15 mistakes, but humans make 40 mistakes. So it is much better for an AI to implement the logic. They outshine here the human performance if you want but if you look here at algorithmic logic here you see in the error 87 for 03 and only 53 for humans so you see they show us here exactly where the AI system have their systemic failure points now let's look at reasoning 
Now, interesting, the reasoning, you know, we have this chain of thought and the large reasoning models. The reasoning helps with logic task. And this is great, no? But you expect this. Because if you compare the reasoning models to the non-reasoning counterparts, the authors found that the biggest performance gains by the reasoning models are in the logic-heavy categories, where you have the chain of sort methods, no? where you have structured step-by-step -step chain of sort derivations. Logic structures follow a particular pattern. Great. However, if you have multiple attempts, so pass at k, and you say k10 or k20, this helps now with the observational complexity. But of course, now, if you allow a model to try multiple attempts from multiple perspectives on the same topic, you just more or less have a brute force approach where you say, okay, out of the 20 trial and errors, one will work. And yeah, this is really what happened. So in the observation heavy category, if you let it run and run and run and run and run again, at one time it will find here one correct solution. And here you have the graph for this from the authors. This is now here the number of attempts on the x-axis, so the k value of pause out k. And you see if you look here for the easy one, and here in orange you have O4 mini low. Yes, beautiful. The more attempts, so you see the pause rate goes up and up and up. And even at the medium, you see the more attempts you let the system run the same query. Yes, the performance goes up, not as strong, but yeah, it goes up and up and up. Only on the hard tier, as I've shown you, everybody is at 0.0%. Interesting. Now, what are the main insights of this beautiful benchmark? Now, they deliver here a clear message, no? All the rumors that elite human programmers are out because now we have AI code, the authors tell us this is overstated, no? The current models are great and compared with a standard coder, which says, hey, just build some web devs or just build a web page or just build some simple implementation where you have hundreds and hundreds of GitHub code repos. No problem at all for an AI. This is really beautiful. We recall vast amount of information and executing complex structured procedure that has been trained on hundreds and thousands of times. No problem for an AI. However, they struggle really with the human shine eh? in creative problem solving unseen problems, discovering here elegant, non-obvious solution, this famous aha moment. Eh? And the authors tell us this reasoning gap here is real and significant. But it is interesting to learn that it happens now exactly in this sector. Plus, they tell us here, there's something else. This is here one of the clearest delineation between a model's intrinsic reasoning ability this is what it knows without anything else. This is its internal knowledge and the ability to leverage tools. You allow the, the code LLM to use your different tools and with the tools, you're not going to believe it, but the performance goes up. Well, of course, if you have tools, if you have operational tools, terminal on access, you can have a local compilation, instantly catch and fix syntax error, you can have a sample testing run. You run the code against the problem examples to catch your simple logical flaws. You look at the error code and you can correct immediately. And you can have a brute force exploration. Eh? Just write a simple, inefficient brute force solution for a small input to find patterns here that are guiding you to a more complex, efficient solution. Step by step. Baby steps. You can do all of this if you have access to tools. If you have not access to tools, you should have here the internal intelligent, the internal knowledge, the internal information to solve it. But there is a huge implementation for the future. Eh? Because now we have, if you design new LLMs, we have to ask ourselves, what do you want? Do you want an AI model that is a better inherent internal reasoner for code examples? Or should we build maybe smaller AI models but with a more efficient tool use interface or knowledge. But both are beautiful, valuable goals, no? but they are not the same. And this benchmark here is a beautiful methodology to disentangle exactly these two effects. 
Because either we build in the next generation pure internal inherent causal reasoning code monsters with, I don't know, 671 billion free trainable parameter, or we take a smaller model that has been trained on exceptional tool use patterns, and we outsource, if you want, the coding intelligence into the tools. Maybe the tools also will de develop a kind of basic intelligence for that particular task, and we have a smaller model that knows now exactly how to have an exceptional tool use pattern. You see? Fascinating insights. Plus, there's more. If you go to the addendum of this publication, you see pages over pages over pages of beautiful example mathematical problems, and they tell you here, look, this is rated 1,600 ELE. So you know exactly about the complexity where some of the model fails, and some other models like O4 Mini High, exceptionally good performance here in this particular benchmark data. So absolutely interesting to see how you imply large language model that are now specialized here for the code sequence optimization, not for the linguistic semantic human language optimization here. And I think this test here really opens here the eyes where we are here with the current performance of excellent code LLMs. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you subscribe and then I see you in my next video.